There's just one word that can describe today's video. EU. Hello fellow Herders of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Contrast, a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And for this episode I'm going to paint a box walker. So let's get cracking. So as you can see we are starting from a base coat of Wraithbone Spray and for a first step in this really jolly guy I am going to use a 3 to 1 mix of Dark Old Flesh and Volupus Pink. As always with contrast paints I am going to apply a layer to a section, in this case the sections are a bit, well, hard to, to discern but you can always find one and I'm going to go around absorbing any excess where I don't want it to be, just like that and I will keep on going. Our coat of dark old flesh and bulbous pink is now dry and it's time to highlight all our skin and for this I'm going to start with Kisla flesh. And I have my Kisla flesh thin to this sort of consistency, you see it's thinned down but it's not dramatic and I'm just going to apply a heavy glaze of this towards the part that I want to have more light. I'm moving my brush from the darkest part into the lightest that way more pigment will drop there, creating an instant gradient. While I'm working on that, let me talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Over the past year I've turned down a lot of sponsorship offers and there's a very good reason why I accepted this one. Skillshare is a community full of passionate people just like me, people that are passionate about teaching others and about sharing their knowledge and Skillshare offers a place where they can do just that and make a living out of it. By joining Skillshare you will get access to thousands of amazing classes in any topic you can think of like color theory, sculpting, photography and video production. This is a great opportunity to finally explore that skill you always wanted to develop and never did. Look at me, two years ago I never thought I was able to produce videos and thanks to Skillshare I am now developing my skills further as I am finally learning Adobe After Effects with introduction to Adobe After Effects getting started with motion graphics by Ivan Abrams. This is something I always wanted to know and now I will be able to add even more value to my content thanks to Skillshare. Skillshare is designed with learning in mind, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow whatever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Click the link in the description to join Skillshare and the first 1000 people to do so will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So thanks again to Skillshare for not only only providing a community for people to share their knowledge but also for supporting content creators like me on YouTube so we can keep making the videos you like to watch. Back to the video. With our highlight of Kiss the Flesh now done, I'm going to move into Flate 1 Flesh. I have my Flate 1 Flesh thinned down to the same sort of consistency as you can see here. And I'm going to do just basically the same highlight I did with Kiss the Flesh, only taking less space. Again concentrating this toward the upper sections of its volume. Again just picking up all of our details, like for example here on the face.
all our highlights on the skin with flip one flesh are now done and before working more on the skin i need to take care of the boils and what i did is base coat them with corax white off camera and i'm going to apply a layer of nas direct yellow over all the boils I'm applying the nas direct yellow and as always i am clean any excess where i don't want it Whenever possible, I'm trying to make the Nastrek yellow deposit on the top of the boil. You can see that effect in those boils there. And if I can't, I will just go back once this is all dry and make another layer just on the top of the boils. The Nastrek yellow over the boils is now done and I'm going to keep on adding tones to my skin. For this, I'm going to take Volupus Pink and thinning it down with Lamia Medium really really thin you can see how thin that is there and i'm going to apply this towards some of the extremities for example his his arms both hands and i will do several layers of this i want to have really dark hands i think that makes for a really cool effect so once this coat dries, I'm going to apply another one and probably a couple more. And I'm also going to apply this in, in random spots, for example, here, there, picking some of this patchiness of his skin, just like that. As you can see, the last layer of the Volupus Pink Glaze is still drying, and I will take this time to add even more tones to his skin. And I will do this using Plague Bearer Flesh, and I will apply this over all these little small boils, just like that. Just adding a bit more of that yellowy green that Nurgle loves so much. I want to add a bit more green to his skin, so I'm taking Militarum Green and I'm filling it down again to this sort of glaze consistency using Lamia Medium and I'm going to glaze this into some of the shadows. And again, I'm going to pick some of these boils that he has here. The smaller ones, I think that looks really good. With all the tones added to his skin, I'm going to go back to Flit One Flesh and I'm going to re-highlight the areas where I apply those tones, for example, here on the red details, on the pink details. I'm just going to apply another highlight and I'm also going to pick any of these very small boils. Of course, I'm not going to forget about the hands, which I will just do a very thin edge highlight with flayed one flesh. And now for the final highlight on the skin, I'm going to use Palette Witch Flesh. And in the general skin areas, I will do a normal highlight, just picking up the most exposed parts like so just continuing the work we did with palette with flayed one flesh and kiss the flesh and on his hands I will just do some dots of this as an extreme highlight.
don't forget to also do these dots in the areas that you painted with a glaze of Volupus pink. With the skin not done, I'm going to highlight all the boils. And for this, I'm going to start with the sharp deep bone. And I'm going to do a broad highlight here at the bottom of each boil. I have again my sharp deep bone thin, sort of like this. And I will just apply a highlight towards the bottom. And with the sharp tip on, on the small boils, I will do like a kind of dot at the top, again, as if it was a gem. And on the larger ones, I will do like a line. And now to finish off all the boils. Now to finish off all the boils, I'm going to take pure white and I'm going to do a very small dot here at the highlight we did at the top. And on the bigger ones, I will do a very small highlight at the bottom. All the flesh is now done, and please note that I painted his eyes as I did all of these boils, and I also cleaned up everything that is going to be bone coral, so that is the maggots and the horns, with corrupt white, and I cleaned his pants using wraith bone. And for the next step, I'm going to paint his orange pants, and for this I'm going to use a 2 to 1 mix of Griffhound orange and contrast medium. Again, this is two parts Griff, Hound, Orange, and one part Contrast Medium. While the Griff, Hound, Orange dries, I'm going to base coat all the areas that will be bone using a skeleton hoard. So that includes the maggots. And of course, the horns. The layer of Grimham orange is now dry and I'm going to apply a bit more contrast into the cloth using Wildwood. And what I'll do is basically mark all the separations between what is orange and what would be other colors. I'm just basically blacklining all the orange details. I finished doing all the recess shading with Wildwood and now I'm going to start highlighting all his yellow pants and for this I'm going to use Ushapti Bone. And I'm just going to do an edge highlight with this. And I'm going to try and be as thin as possible with this. My highlight with the sharp tip on is now done and I'm going to move into palette with flesh. And I'm just going to do the same highlight, only this time I will pick less of the edges. As always focusing this towards the most exposed corners of the folds, like this. The 
I let on the pants are not done, and I want this to be a brighter orange than it is, and yellow is perfect for this, so I'm going to do a glaze using the and yellow. You can see how thin down the and yellow is, and I'm thinning down with contrast medium, and just going to apply a glaze with this over all the surface. You can see how immediately this turns from a desaturated orange into a bright orange thanks to the yellow. My glaze with the end and yellow is now dry enough and I'm going to apply my final highlight with palette wood flesh again, but this time it will be just very small dots. The end and yellow has turned this into a very beautiful orange, but it also has had the effect of toning down a tiny bit my brightest highlight, so I'm just going to go back and give this these small touches of light just in the very corners. With the orange on the pants done, I'm going to finish his bones before finishing his pants. And for this, I'm going to use a mix of one part wild wood and four parts contrast medium. I'm going to use this to glaze a darker shade of bone towards the tips. So as you see, I'm applying this to the tips of the bones. I will clean my brush and feather out the transition, just like that. And once this coat dries, I will apply in as many coats as I see fit to make this bone look way, way darker on the tips. With all the layers of wild wood applied on the horns, while those layers dried, I also cleaned up all the stripes that he has on his pants with Cornox White. I'm going to first highlight all the bones, and for this I'm going to start with Palette Wood Flesh, and I'm just going to apply some lines of this towards the bottom. But I'm also going to pick, like you see here, the most prominent shapes of the horn itself. And for the tips of the horns, I have my palette with flesh thinned down like you see here. And I'm just going to apply, again, a highlight, picking up the most prominent shapes. The bones are now painted, and now I will paint the maggot. And this will be really easy, because the only thing I will do is do a highlight with pure white. So I'm just taking pure white, and I am going to do very small dots of this in the upper side of each maggot. Just like that. And what we have pure white on the palette, I'm also going to maybe do some dots on the bones, maybe here towards the lower sections. With the maggots and the bones now 100% finished, I'm going to paint the white stripes on his pants, and for this I'm going to layer them with a mix of one part Space Wolves Grey and three parts Contrast Medium. Now I'm going to highlight all the white stripes using pure white. And I'm just going to pick up, you know, raised folds and all the edges. With the white done, there's only just one detail left to paint, and that is all the steel details. And for this, I'm going to paste coat and use an iron hand steel.
all these ropes that are around his wrench, I will paint the same way as I did the maggots. With the layer of iron hand steel not done, I'm going to wash it, and for this I'm going to use a mix of one part wild wood and four parts contrast medium, the same mix that we used to shade the upper side of the of the horns. As always, I am going to apply it to a section and then use my brush to absorb any excess. With the wash of wild wood now applied, I am going to use Iron Breaker to highlight all the metal details. And I am just going to pick all the edges. And with that last step done, our Pogs Walker Mini is finished. And okay, Nurgle is gross, but it's also quite fun to paint once in a while. And I really did have a very fun time painting this jolly guy. So guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. I also have merch that you can see just below this video or in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me. You will get something back for generosity. So guys, thank you very much for watching. And a special thank you to Daniel Figueiredo, Heather Amster, Lauren Sigismondi, Ben Morin, Victor Dommel, Michael Boye, Christoph Moret, Joshua Bohannon, Brian Mann, Bel Drain, Patrick Katsitsis, Javi Motag, Kevin Suras, Kieran Omurthai, Lena Lindemann, Dr. V, G Force, Elric Kesh, Sasha Park, Kitty Butler, Joe Simpson, Dominic Trevizo, Richard Kielkowski, Brent Schillinger, Mark Jarvis, Gareth Smith, Bill Caswar, Matteo de Rienzo, Arundel, Natius Maximus, Samuel Supernev, Aikutas, Chris Fivey, Darcy Farrar, and Kevin Mian for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks on my Patreon and take control.